Good morning and welcome to the show and thanks for waking up with us. You're probably wondering what I have in my hand here. This is a tool of the trade that they use at Richardson's Furniture Refinishing right here in Panama City on Luverne Avenue and I guess it's 4th Street. Is that 5th Street? Yes, it's 102 East 4th Street. 102 East 4th Street, right on the corner there. And uh, I've got Steve Richardson here with us today. Steve, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. I mean, we had done a story on your place and your dad's place a while back, and it's a really interesting place where you, people bring in old things and you make them look new, or you reassemble them, you put them back together. I brought in an old fire extinguisher that was given to me when I was a, a fireman back in New York back in the day. It had been painted over a bunch of times, it was all red, but I knew underneath that there was something metal. So I brought it in to you guys, and you put it on the wheel, <laughs> and showed me what was such a beautiful finish underneath it. And it turned out to be, I guess, copper and brass. Yes, sir. Well, uh, pieces over time, the air and the humidity sometimes makes things tarnish. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you have to do is you have to remove the top finish and get underneath to where the, the brass and the silver and whatever it is that you're polishing looks beautiful again. And uh, we put a clear coat on top of it to make sure that it stays beautiful over time. So it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know, oxidize again or anything like that. No, and right. in my case, somebody painted this beautiful piece of metal over, mm -hmm. you know, in, in red. And I guess it had probably had something to do with the New York City fire code that said all fire extinguishers now need to be red. Mm -hmm. So they painted over this brass and copper thing. And, and now it's just a beautiful piece that we have in our home. And this is one of the tools of your trade. You use this on, on, a, on a wheel, right? Yes, sir. What mm -hmm. we do is we have this sitting on the wheel, mm -hmm. and it spins, and uh, this is the compound. It's sort of like sandpaper. It has a little bit of grit to it, so, so it So you removes. actually put that on the metal? Well, what you do is you put it on the wheel there while uh -huh. it spins, and it coats the wheel. That way it has more friction. That right. way it removes the uh, old finish. And, yeah, and this is super soft. If you were to feel this, this is like almost like a cotton ball, it feels like. Mm -hmm. Well, it goes through mm -hmm. three stages. There's a rough one mm -hmm. that's a lot harder than this one, and it has a uh, sewing thread in it to keep it tougher and stronger. Mm -hmm. But this is the one that actually pulls out the mirror look to it, yeah, now, the shine. Now, this particular piece here is, is an old lamp that someone had brought in that was pretty well tarnished up. Mm, yes, sir. And, and you use that very same process? Yes. To get this back to life? Yes, sir. And what am I looking at here? Is that brass? That's copper uh, at the this bottom? This is copper. This uh -huh. is actually silver. This oh is my. silver and the sides are silver. This is brass. This is some kind of alloy. It's, it's not silver, but it's pretty nice. The bottom lip of this is copper and then the top is brass. Wow. Yes, sir. Um, sometimes a piece will come in and it will be plated. We can't do plated stuff because mm -hmm. there's such a thin layer on it, but you can always tell if it's plated or not. You just get a magnet and you put it on, and if it's solid, it won't stick. This looks like a beautiful heirloom from someone's family. Yes, that sir, it is. Maybe um, sat in an attic or something, who knows? Well, it was the person's uh, grandmother's, and uh, they inherited it, and it's the only piece that they got. So, you know, they, there was a lot of sentimental value mm -hmm. in it, so they brought it to us and told us to make it look pretty again. And How old a piece is it. this? Is this really old? Or? Yeah, it, it's probably around 1850s. It, it's... Mm -hmm. Wow. It's not a very valuable piece, but, but the craftsmanship yeah, speaks it, for itself. It's, it's, and it's, it's very got a lot beautiful. of sentimental value. Mm -hmm. We've got to run off to the local weather. On the other side of that, I want to talk more about some of the things that you guys do down there. It's not just brass and things like that. You do furniture and you name it. Yes, sir. We'll be right back after your local weather brought to you by the West Pittman Law Firm. WestPittmanLawFirm.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Steve Richardson from Richardson's Furniture Refinishing right here in little old Panama City. And you guys do great work. And I can say that with authority because you've done some work for me uh, refinishing that old fire extinguisher, that brass and copper fire extinguisher. And, you know, before the break, we were looking at this stuff, Steve, and you were telling me all the different metals that were involved in this and, and the process that it takes to get this thing shiny like this without damaging it. But you just don't do metal. I mean, you guys do 
furniture as well, furniture refinishing? Yes, sir. We do uh, furniture refinishing. Um, we do repair. We do on-site touch-up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can pretty much do anything. And what, what's an on-site on -site touch-up? I mean, if I have an old piece that's maybe damaged, do you come out and fix it for me? Well, one, one good example is uh, Panhandle Educators Bank. Mm -hmm. um, they have this humongous wooden desk that goes around one of the offices. And uh, it, it's a piece that you couldn't pick up and move. So mm -hmm. what we do is we come on site and we do touch up and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just whatever we can. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so if it's too big to move, we will yeah. come there and do it. Bring, bring Mohammed to the mountain, so yes, to speak. Sir. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. Now, also, you, you rebuild furniture, too. And you showed me a picture during the break uh, of this old chair that someone had found in the woods. Yes, sir. This While they were hunting. This chair. Somebody out there hunting. Yeah, well, it was broken into a lot of pieces. I mean, it, it almost looked like it couldn't be repaired. But down there, we can re redo pieces, make new pieces on lathes and... Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not really a job that we can't repair. So you can fabricate missing pieces to make anything whole again and put it back together. Yes, sir. And make it look like new. Yeah. So you, you've got the, uh, uh, the whole furniture end of things. What are some of the more memorable pieces of furniture that you had through there? I know there's some historic things. That there are. Too. There's historic yeah. pieces and then there's stories about pieces. One time this lady had brought us a chair that she really loved. She got it from her mom. And uh, she brought it to us, and we refinished it, made it look beautiful. And uh, she took it back to her house, and she went on a vacation. Well, whenever she got back, the whole house had been destroyed, and they used the chair as the bat to destroy all the other pieces. Oh, they, so the house was burglarized. Yes, sir. Oh, how awful. And, uh, well, she brought us back the chair, and it looked like it had fallen off the back of a truck and smashed into probably over 100 pieces. But uh, we put it back together and it looked just as good as it did brand new. That's amazing stuff. I know when we did a story there one time, we, we, your dad was, had taken apart an old desk that he was refinishing. And in the back of the old desk, we found bank receipts from like 1914 and, and, and Christmas cards from 1940. And I guess, you know, paperwork had fallen back over there. Do you find little historical All gems like that? All kinds of things. Sometimes I find old love letters from the couples, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll call them up and tell them. They'll come down and see it and just, you know, get emotional because they hadn't seen it in over 60 years. Isn't that something? It's great. You know, it's nowadays you do everything in text and computers, so it's, it's really cool whenever you see history written down like that. And that is, that is a brush with history. It mm -hmm. really is. And, and what you guys do, I'm really envious. I mean, I've, I've walked through there and looked at some of the pieces that you have there. It's just massive. And some are small, and, and I guess there's no job too big or too small for you, is there? No, sir. We'll, uh, we'll do anything. We do new furniture, too. If uh, a lot of the stuff you see nowadays, it's, it's snapped together furniture that comes from yeah. China or Asia, but uh, there's, there's nothing we can't work on. Um, you would usually want to, uh, if you're investing the money, you would want to do it on pieces that have, like, historical value and, you know, history to them, but there's nothing we can't do. What's really cool about uh, Richardson's is that it's a multi-generational business. Now, you learned this from your dad, right? Oh, yes, sir. Every every summer, I'd come down to the yeah. shop, and I'd learn the trade. Uh, and your dad learned it from his dad. Yep, and uh, it's it's been in the family for four generations, and yeah. uh, hopefully I can keep it going. So it's real real craftsmen at work right here in Panama City, making old things look new. Mm -hmm. Steve Richardson, thanks so much for coming on the show and showing us some of these gems that you've worked on, no and uh, best wishes to you. And, and uh, if, uh, if anyone wants to come down to the shop, it's uh, 102 East 4th Street, and uh, we'll do a little tour, show you how we do it. And, uh, oh, yeah, go down there. You won't regret it. Yes, it, it it's a real interesting place. Thanks again for coming on the show. And we'll be right back after your Mad Hatter Minute. Hi, this is David Lovett, and this is your Mad Hatter Minute. There are millions of cars on the roads in the United States today, and each one is a source of air pollution. In 1975, with the implementation of the Clean Air Act, essentially what the Clean Air Act did for the automotive industries is make catalytic converters an actual requirement for all vehicles. The job of the catalytic converter is to take the harmful pollutants and change them into harmless emissions, which expel through the exhaust tailpipe. On modern vehicles, there are two sensors located on the exhaust system. 
one before the catalytic converter and one after the catalytic converter. These sensors read the oxygen that are going through, through the exhaust system and the amount of unburned oxygen that, that is there. As a result, signals are sent back to the, the electronic control unit of the vehicle, which will tell the vehicle to run either richer or leaner, to add fuel or subtract fuel, thereby maintaining performance in engine emissions. When the catalytic converter fails, it's not unusual to, to have the smell of rotten eggs. What this is, is the actual catalyst inside the catalytic converter is burning up and cracking and falling apart, or is physically melting inside the shell of the catalytic converter. Either way, the catalytic converter needs to be replaced or it's going to clog the, the vehicle's exhaust system. Replacing the catalytic converter by itself is not the only thing that needs to be done. A failed catalytic converter is a symptom and not the cause of the problem. Either the vehicle is running too rich or the vehicle is running too lean. You have to identify the source and do that repair as well. If not, you'll be replacing the catalytic converter again very soon. I'm David Lovett and that has been your Mad Hatter Minute. Hey folks, this is Joshua Brown with Mad Hatter on 23rd Street. Is your check engine light on? If it is, text MADHAT28, that's Mad Hat 28, to 24247 and we'll check it for free. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Heather Noyes from Raymond James Financial to give us a little advice on now that the elections are over, the dust is settling, things are starting to shake out. What's that going to do to the markets? You know, we've talked a couple of times before about how the markets don't like uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And really, it's going to have, not I mean, almost no effect on the market, uh, almost like a non-event because the uncertainty is cleared. Or I take that back. It's going to have a positive effect on the markets um, just because we've gotten through it. And now we can kind of guess, I guess, at what new policies and things might be there. So it's really just a matter of the uncertainty has cleared the air and we're now off to the races. And traditionally, um, following a midterm election, November and December are great months and the f year following, so 2015, uh, should be a great year. On average, the markets, the following a midterm election, mm -hmm. the next 200 trading days is averaged 18%. Wow. Wow, so you so, know that. And it doesn't really make a difference what party, uh, I suppose. Correct. Uh, it, it, that 18% is a given right. after midterm. Right. And it has to do with the middle of this presidential cycle as well. So the midterm election that's, you know, in the middle of the for uh, in the middle of the presidential uh, cycle also is what kind of is the better mm -hmm. performer anyway. Well, well, let me ask you this now. Now, you know, with Republicans coming in, and we've got this oil boom, we're on the, on the cusp of this huge oil boom here in the U.S., and now we might have some more oil-friendly policies coming down the pike, like Keystone Pipeline and things like that. Do, do you think that 18% can be added to a little bit more? Sure, sure. Like yeah. I said, that's an average. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 1942, I think it was, the uh, markets returned 30%. So wow. it certainly can improve and do better. Um, if we look back historically, though, at whenever we had a Democratic, go uh, Democratic president and um, a Republican Congress, markets averaged about 10%. And when we had a split house, uh, they averaged about 10%. So really, yeah. it really again, doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference, but it can put into play, again, you know, like you said, some policies that maybe. But it's for the economy. But I guess the key is the stability and predictability of the government is really what has the impact on the market. Absolutely. In the upswing. Now, what should we, we now, now say you're an investor, is, is there any particular type of investment we should be looking at in these post-election times? Well, I think U.S. stocks is where I would focus, mm -hmm. um, um, predominantly large company stocks, um, your blue chip type companies. And that's why you wear the blue, uh, Absolutely. blue suit. <laughs> For blue chip advice. <laughs> for, <laughs> right. Noise, you know? So, so uh, you know, I, I find it really intriguing when, when, when uh, uh, different parties try to characterize themselves as being more business friendly as the other. And then when you look at the averages, it really doesn't make mm -hmm. a difference in the... In the yeah, and I mean, looking yeah. at like even the presidential elections, um, actually the markets have, have done a little bit better under a Democratic president. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's, you know, I, I mean, I've done the mm -hmm. uh, research behind the fact, is it, you know, from what was put into place before them, was it, you know, or 
things yeah. that they're doing. Now, now there is a disconnect in this economy. A lot of people would point out to you know labor force participation and the markets. Mm -hmm. You know unemployment and the markets. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they don't necessarily go hand in hand. Just because the market is doing great, mm -hmm. I mean, say Wall Street is doing well, does it mean Main Street is doing well? Well, the markets are all based off of the economy, mm -hmm. um, and so there may be certain pockets that may not feel like the economy is, is improving, um, but the economy is improving, mm -hmm. and that's what drives the markets up. So, so even no, if you're no, really, to, your, yeah, okay. to answer your question. Yeah. <laughs> so even if you're an unsophisticated guy like me, maybe you have a 401 or some sort of you know retirement plan, you're in the market. Yes. And this will be a good time for you, for your Absolutely. plan. Absolutely. And we talked um, before, too, about being in the middle of a cyclical bull market. Mm -hmm. We think we've at least got another seven years of a bull market, which is an up market. All right. So we look forward to, you know, that 18%. Yeah, hopefully. And, and <laughs> in the middle of a bull market. And right. uh, things are looking up. Right. Heather Noyes, thanks for the encouraging news. Raymond James Financial. Thanks so much. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Jim Hellett from John Lee Nissan, and we're going to get some car buying tips from him. We're going to get the inside scoop here. Welcome to the show, Jim. Thanks for, hey, nice for, to see for you coming here. on. Yeah. Um, is there a good car buying season? I mean, is there a, a good time of year to shop for a car? Any time is a great time, uh -huh. especially at John Lee Nissan Mazda. Now, some people say, well, that's a salesman answer, but you told me before the interview that you guys work like it's the last day of the month every day. That's correct. So, you know, so I could go in there and say, I don't like that price, and we can work something out, can't we? We can always work something out. Mm -hmm. you just tell us what's most important to you. We have a, a knowledgeable sell staff, and we'll tailor it to your situation. Now, do people come into the uh, uh, into lot and say, um, here's what I need and you show them a car or do some people just come in they've already done their research and said that's the car I want and this is the price I want. In today's market most done the research already however mm -hmm. either way you can't lose you come in mm -hmm. uh, we're here to help you and if you ch check the net you can get on there you can google us whatever mm -hmm. uh, and the, the cars are so technology advanced now so they do a lot of homework before they come here sure. and it, it makes a seamless transition it's pretty neat. Yeah yeah I guess it would. Now. There's the age-old argument, like, what's best for people is the leasing versus buying. I mean, I've done both, and I, I'm not sure what's what's the best fit for my needs. I think I'm a buyer, not a leaser. What's the difference between leasing and buying? What's better? Actually, for you? it's just another, leasing is just another form of financing. If there's a good rate and residual, and you like to change often and mm -hmm. always be under factor warranty, you may want to consider leasing. Mm -hmm. Because all you're doing is putting off your buying decision to see if you like it. And if you were going to buy or lease a car, who better to buy it at the end? You know it. You put all the miles on it. And you know exactly what it is. If you mm -hmm. want to get it, you can do it. So, Jim, if I'm not sure uh, if I want to lease or buy, could I just come in and say, hey, could you kind of help me make that decision? Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll show you every way it is, what's best for you, because, uh, you, you know, you're the buyer. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of resources on the Internet, too. I know we can find John Lee Nissan on the internet. You probably have your inventory out there we got that we the can whole, look at. We, we got over yeah. 300 uh, new Nissans and Mazas, and you get on there and pick and choose what you want. You come in and uh, we make it very seamless for you. Now, I'm kind of a car buff, and you know, what are the 15s looking like? What, what are the, what's your favorite car coming out in 2015? Well, right now, the Altima, as you know, is a, is a, yeah. a, a top of the notch vehicle, especially with gravity. Zero gravity seats. Zero gravity seats. Zero gravity astronaut design to uh, you spend a lot of time in your in your vehicle. Most people do. Mm -hmm. Well, it it finds all your pressure points and it's kind of like floating on air. So when you go on, you can travel at least over 646 miles on one tank of gas. That's 38 miles on the highway, and it's an wow. unbelievable ride. 38 mpg 38 on the highway. 38 mpg, and that's not a hybrid. That is just yeah. a, a 2.5 liter. It's just like a super efficient, th and, and Altima's are such a comfortable car too. They, they very, they're they mm -hmm. very comfortable and uh, a lot of amenities. You can go turn by turn navigation, uh, sunroof, alloys, leather. Yeah, I guess all the, the sky's amenities. the limit it, it, it with really the options is. that you can put on It there. really is, and uh, coming out in the future, we have some, we have three new model lines uh, uh, that the buying public will be very interested to see. Yeah, what are some of the other cars that are coming out? 
Uh, the Murano will be a brand new car. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, that's a Titan. SUV, right? That is a little crossover mm -hmm. uh, SUV, and then you have uh, I, I can believe I said it was the Titan. Yeah. Yep, and the I've Maxima, wait till you see the new Maxima. Oh, the Maximas are, are really, really. They've, they've always been nice, though, the Maximas. They're, 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 yeah. We've got a nice selection of them. Now right they can now. get a little pricey, though, you know, the, the Maximas, but uh, that might be a good time to start thinking about a lease <laughs> if you want to get into a really nice that, car. That is correct. You know? We have a lot of great leases out there right Yeah, now. you can certainly help us do that uh, analysis when we show up I, there. I can. Yeah. Now, what about used cars? Used cars, we have a great selection of pre-owned. Mm -hmm. uh, I say used, you say pre-owned. Pre-owned, yeah. certified. Now, what does that mean when they say it's pre-owned, certified? Pre-owned, certified means the best news cars make the best used cars. So you do a, an inspection on there and say these we are... We do. They go through 160-point inspection, and mm -hmm. they have a great extended warranty on it, but it's, it comes with the car as far as the uh, powertrain. Jim Heller from John Lee Nissan, thanks so much for coming on the show and getting Thank us started on, on car buying. And who knows, you may want to get one this Christmas. Thanks for watching the show today. Thanks for waking up with us, and we'll see you next time.